Can't beat this, right? Okay, here we are at Nathan Bedford Forest State Park. We're looking for Nathan. Yeah. And this is the trailhead. This is the back of the nature center at the highest point in western Tennessee. It starts out by going down a pretty steep hill. And from where we parked, we had kind of a steep hill to climb up from the parking lot. So it's kind of a warm day. It's probably around 90 degrees and it's not raining so that's good it is a bit warm we're hoping it'll get down to 60 tonight so that it will be comfortable for sleeping and all throughout this park they have these really pretty moss trails really pretty bright green color if you hike I believe to the 10 mile trail or between the 10 and 20, there's the remnants of an old camp up high on a bluff. You can climb up there and see the old buildings and it overlooks the Tennessee River from a cliff. It's really pretty. Down below here we have our first little creek. which we've gotten water here before and we use Aquamira to treat it. It's very clear and rocky, sandy stream bed so it's a good place to get water. But we've only been hiking for 15 minutes so um, we don't really need water at this point unless you just forgot to bring enough. Once you get to the five mile shelter, it's up on a hill so there's no water there. But I do believe we pass another creek before we get there. This is the final hill that leads up to the five mile shelter. We believe it was an old road and I don't, have no idea how they got their vehicles up a road this steep. Still going. You can get an idea of how steep it is. I think we're almost there. There's the marker. So this is a pretty, pretty cool hike. I would say for Western Tennessee. It starts to look a bit like Eastern Tennessee. And here is the five mile shelter. You have Dave. You have a lovely shelter, pretty simple, but it'll keep you dry and off the ground. And then where we usually hammock camp is a little bit here. And this is our view from here. In the winter time with the leaves off the trees, you could really see how high up you were. But yeah, it's beautiful. So here is my view from the hammock. With the tarp up. Quite lovely. So right now I'm just hanging out. Here's the bug net. I have it. I have the hammock turned upside down. Um, so even though the bug net is sewn in, you can use it without the bug net upside down. Here's the view inside my hammock with the net up. It finally 
cooled off enough last night to actually get in my bag. And I have my quilt on underneath, which I can see it's slid pretty far. Well, it's still pretty effective. Um, it was in the 60s last night, and I was pretty comfortable with it underneath me. Um, kind of warm going to sleep, but I was pretty comfortable with the sleeping bag and the under quilt. Dave's already got his hammock. He's packing up. He's got his uh, tarp down. Putting everything else away. <coughs> but I'm starving, so I think I need to get up. So I've got my alcohol stove that a friend made for us. We've got half of our camp packed up and we're just sitting here eating breakfast and relaxing before we start hiking again. There's Dave. <laughs> nice. Nice view. <laughs> and there's my dad. We've been hiking all year long through the winter and though we had to deal with the cold um, there were no bugs, which was very nice. No ticks, no chiggers. The poison ivy, for the most part, was died back. Um, and no spiders. <laughs> so we're walking along this trail, and I am constantly waving my trick poles to break all the spider webs. Hardly ever any people out here. I think we saw... One other couple yesterday evening who came through the shelter area, but they were just passing through. They weren't camping. And we didn't see anybody else. If you come, you just stop by the park office on the way in and get a permit, and it doesn't cost anything. But that way they know you're out here. <laughs> Cobweb. Ugh. Oh, there's a spider hanging on me. Yuck. This is one of the cool places you can stop here. There's a, um, it's kind of a clearing up on the top of the hill. And there's old remains of a, I don't know what it is, something metal. And then over here there's log remains. So anyway, this is a nice little place to stop. So you know you're at the, uh, close to the end of the trail when you come up to the gate that supposedly keeps the vehicles from coming out here. Although I have seen four-wheelers on here before, which I don't think they were supposed to be. <laughs> nice uh, rocking chair, which is a little squeaky. <laughs> this is the cabin that oftentimes we've been here. It's been rented. So... And they have a beautiful view of the river. I believe it is a restored cabin. Looks pretty cool. This is the front. Um, you see it from the back when you're hiking on the trail. So this is kind of cool to come see if nobody is staying here. We've just left the cabin and we're doing the last, last leg of our journey. This is the walk from the um, cabin that you can rent back to the car. Well, we made it back. The trail came up that way into the parking lot. It was uphill both ways. It was in some places. <laughs> and then when you start the trail, you head up that way, walking up that road towards the museum. So this is it. We're home. Well, we're back to the car. <laughs>